course you do. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. Thank you, Amber. Appreciate you a lot. Ah, Phoenix in the summer. I have just, this is now the seventh weekend in a row that I've been to the convention. Oh my God. And I've been in, in Washington, Bucharest, Birmingham, Rome, Melbourne, Sydney, home, and now I'm here. And uh, it's just, it's an amazing thing. The spellings of your names are a little different around the world. But other than that, it's exactly the same. It's the most wonderful, wonderful thing to do is to get Thank to see you, you all. We you're love welcome. you. You're very welcome. <laughs> While you were brought up to be polite, I like that, but shouting out is the opposite. <laughs> I'm accustomed as I am to public speaking. I can sit here and talk to myself all day because it's like, I just love the sound of my voice. <laughs> Especially when this book has this many people in the room. But, uh, the way I love to torture you and give you a really hard time. Oh wow, you're signing my stuff. You're signing my stuff. get yourself in trouble with every member of the community in this <laughs> Are you one of the lions? I love that you look like the Jamaican bobsled team. <laughs> Twice as many as there should be. Where's the other lions? I think I'll see if they're any better. I don't like the look at that one. It looks a bit weird. I love you too. So where are they? No, they're gone. Are they all the way over in the back or something? No, what are you looking for? No, that's it. Who cares? <laughs> So might as well go home now. Well, the way I like to do this, I like to torture you as much as I can by getting you to ask me questions and then I will do everything I can to not answer. Exactly! You've been anywhere near in my panels, you'd know that's the fact. So, get up and tell me the question. You don't have to touch it, they'll do all that stuff. So, speak up. Um, so I can see it. Don't let, no pressure. The lights are on. Um, look up, you little tired. Turn around, turn around. Look, turn around, look. Don't get nervous, just turn around. Oh my god! Welcome to my world. Supernatural, and if Crowley had a theme song, what would it be? Really? Yeah! I mean, who is not going to say Mr. Crowley? I figured that one would seriously, like, like, besides Mr. Crowley. Like, if, well, uh, besides we'll, the obvious. Well, what's, what's, do you remember the tune that was used um, when I first appeared in season five? Which I thought was hysterical. Oh, oh my god. No. Wasn't it Aaron Neville singing, Everybody Plays the Fool? <laughs> I was like, really? Because when we shot it, Phil originally said to me, uh, you're going to be listening to Norwegian death metal. <laughs> and it came on and I'm listening to Aaron Neville going, that is the weirdest thing ever, because if you look at my face, I'm listening to Norwegian death metal. <laughs> so pretty much the answer to your question, which is not really an answer at all, is, uh, is the fact that whatever it is that the music's on there, in my head, I'll always be, always be listening to Norwegian death metal. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Are there any other lines? Just this line. Is there another line? Oh, there's a line there? Please. Okay, I'll alternate. Go for it. I have two questions for you. That's not good enough. <laughs> Did you write them down? No. Do they have bullet points? Maybe. Is it one question with a follow-up or is it two distinct and different questions? So you're hogging the line. All these people who used to like you now absolutely detest you because you're taking extra time. And you haven't even asked the question yet. What's wrong? Sorry, what was your question? <laughs> I, I, can't be, I can't be that mean. <laughs> Is it Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, 
was that? Is Moose and Squirrel your favorite nickname for Sam and Dean? Is Moose and Squirrel? I always get, Debbie always get confused. Is Moose and Squirrel? Are Moose and Squirrel? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, my brain goes, is, are, is it? Is it? You never know which one to use, right? It's just one of those things that happens. Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> Moose and Squirrel. Your favorite nickname for Sam. What do you think? <laughs> what did we, we, we tried all the stuff before? Giraffe, Gigantor, <laughs> my petted lumberjack. The best moment in the whole thing is the fact that I'm talking to I'm talking to uh, to Dean, and I'm in my burnt out place because they've eaten my tailor and everything's gone wrong. <laughs> Look what I'm reduced to. And um, as I walk back into the room, I say, "Where's your moose?" And it's the most flat statement of all of them. So, Where's your moose? And he goes, "Oh, he went." Yeah. It was so perfect. It was so absolutely perfect for what he is, and it stuck. And now. There's musketeers. And, I mean, all that. So it's all really funny. It's all really good. I mean, some of you, I don't know. How many people here do not watch Supernatural? <laughs> Kill them! <laughs> You've got them outnumbered. Take them to the door. <laughs> no, um, you will. Don't worry. You will. <laughs> I'm that guy you play catch up on. Whatever show I'm on, after a while, you watch. Oh, there's a reason you're on that. Because you liked it. It's good. Um, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> no, the best part about Moose and Squirrel, the best part about Moose, the end of season, season Dick, what's that, seven? <laughs> season Dick is seven, right? Yeah. Season Dick. Dick, 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 Dick. <laughs> so, did, you ever see the, did you ever see the outtake reel they had of that? Which is just every time the word Dick was said. Yeah. I mean, Dick Roman. Dick, 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 Dick. My mine was the first one. God, she turns up all the time! <laughs> so selfish. People hate you for this. Look at this. It's a trail behind you. Um, yeah, I mean, that was fun because the end of that was, I added that thing of, it originally was written as Sorry Sam, you know, because they'd taken Kevin and they jumped and they, they disappeared. And they begin that set up that whole beginning of season eight thing. But, uh, that was, that was the nicest time I ever used Moose. Well, I wanted to say, I said, I've got to say Moose, I can't say Sam, it just doesn't fit. Because then Moose becomes personal. And that's when, at the end of season seven, Moose became, sorry Moose, you know, it was, it was an affectionate term. And then, when it really got funny, was not Moose. And that's when I lost my mind. you have a follow-up question? Did you, two points. Did you know your character would become the king of hell? Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, that was kind of the plan. That was the idea. <sighs> yeah, what did you think? Go. You want to sit down now? Thank you. Oh, happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! You just reminded me I'm old. <laughs> I am 50 years old. <laughs> you know, I planned on that. I didn't expect that to happen. I did everything I could possibly do to make that not happen. <laughs> Trust me, it, you, you, know, you don't die. That's sort of what you end up with. You don't look like I can't hear you. Please get to the back of the line. <laughs> Your Majesty. Tea, thank you, Amber. I love the hair. Matches the script. There's a lot of TARDIS blue around here. Oh, you guys watch Doctor Who? I've never seen it. Is it any good? So, anyways, I uh, love you, BSG, is the lawyer. And where else there? Too. Sorry, did we, were we introduced? BSG, I'm oh, Scott. Hey, nice to meet you, Scott. How are you doing? Very good. Where are you from? Phoenix. Uh, next question. 
Sorry, go on. Anyways, um, they killed your character off in uh, Warehouse 13. This isn't a question, you know that, right? <laughs> well, no, no, we to get to the question. So when they brought you back, what are your thoughts on them bringing you back as like totally evil? as wanting to destroy everything that you see. I should have had a goatee. In order to follow the rules of the parallel universe, I should have had a full goatee. I mean, we established this, you know, middleman, same thing. The goatee, it works. You know, you have to follow the rules. We have rules, don't we? Yeah! Just can't break the rules. Um, the Warehouse 13 experience was, was, was fascinating. It was, uh, I think it was a bit of a surprise that it closed so quickly. And uh, it was nice to be asked to, to come and help finish it up. That's good. I appreciate that. Did I answer your question? No? Good. <laughs> don't want to break out. It's okay. We're good. We don't. I'm cool. Come to you. What are you looking at? <laughs> Hi. Hello. I also love tea. It's the best. You do? Um, I, my question oh. is related to your... Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, just, just tea. Oh, Jesus, black tea. <laughs> I noticed that's the way tea should be. When you have a cup of tea, that's a cup of tea. Well, I usually drink it over. You like Earl Grey? Yeah. Oh, it's a bit, bit poisonous. <laughs> Tastes like you're eating berries. So are you having fun? Yes. Are you getting nervous as I'm standing next to you? No. Okay, that's it. Try not to ask you. It's just us in the room. Just us. Are you having fun? Do you have a question? My question is about um, the scene where you quoted girls. Of all the amazing Crowley scenes there are, that's probably my favorite. And um, I was wondering if you'd actually seen Girls, um, would you agree that Crowley would most relate to Hannah? And, <laughs> and if you've seen it, what character would you most relate to? Or if you haven't, you can just tell a funny story. Come here. <laughs> I knew that was your girlfriend, by the way. She charged across and jumped straight out of the bunker. I'm going to embarrass you with this for the rest of your life. She's cute. You do? Cool. Well, look, here's the thing. The, the thing about girls is that those are, I think, and don't quote me on this, don't tell anybody I said this because we can get into serious trouble. Hey there. Um, I think these are the drunken three o'clock ramblings of Jeremy Carver. I think he was watching girls and getting, you know, having a couple of whiskeys and he just went, how can I torture Mark Shepard? How can I make it? You know, he's going to have a lot of things to say. And these are the things he's going to say. The whole point being is that I'd obviously been locked in, in watching HBO for a very long time. And he wants to be loved. And I just want to be loved. I mean, it's the same thing. The whole, if you're going to do it, do it with conviction. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, sorry, I threw my hands on there for a second. Um, it's an amazing thing. I mean, they are some of the smartest people you'll ever meet. The writers on the show are just so evilly witty. And they do their best not to tell me what they're going to do. They do their best to just sort of throw stuff at me and have me giggle when I read it. And uh, it's brilliant. It's so much fun to do. I love that speech. I mean, how much more human can you get than David Bowie and girls? True. True. And it is brilliant. But yes, I, I would say Hannah would be the relatable character. <laughs> You're my Barney Moose. I love that. Thank you for your question. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Do you like the tape? I did. There you go. It's cool. <laughs> Now that's dressing up. Love it. Congratulations. Okay, so my question is, watching all the behind the scenes of Supernatural, uh, Jared and Jensen are notorious for their pranks. Have you been a victim of them or a part of them? I've never been asked this question before. <laughs> <laughs> Am I a victim of their pranks? Yes, how do you ever 
You mean the farting? <laughs> the picking up and shaking? I'm sorry, about Jared now, that would be awesome. Um, no, they're really remarkably kind to me. And they, they torture Misha. I mean, they absolutely <laughs> torture Misha. They make Misha's life hell. They didn't just pie him. That, you know, Jensen hit Misha with a pie, beautifully timed. Jared hit him with a pie that was with sufficient force to push Misha's head through the side of a building. Sometimes Jared reminds me of the tick. <laughs> Expecting to turn around and say, Spoon! <laughs> Unfortunately, that probably makes me half. So. <laughs> Not in the face. Um, do they play pranks? Do they play pranks? Yeah. What? They're afraid of me? No, they're not. They just think, no. Jared picks me up at will and shakes me. It's like ridiculous. He is so strong. You have no idea how strong he is. Ten feet taller than me? Listen, Missy. I'm only short on Supernatural. Daniil, uh, Jensen's wife, has a great story, which is when, uh, uh, when she's saying, oh yeah, my husband's on Supernatural. And they go, which one is he, the tall one or the short one? <laughs> he, he's, I think he's like 6'1", 6'2". He's like, yeah, yeah, the short one. <laughs> and then I join the show, and it's like, is he <laughs> the tiny one? <laughs> I think his head has its own zip code. <laughs> He's up there. He's head in the clouds. Do they play pranks? You see it on the reel. They film everything. Anytime we do anything mean to anybody, we make sure somebody's filming it. <laughs> That's just the way we do. We work hard and we play hard. And it's a fantastic place to be. Does that answer your question? Yeah. What am I doing answering questions? <laughs> it's not what I'm supposed to be doing. What? I'm going to be over on this kid for a, while. for a while. Discuss with your friends behind you why I won't be coming back this way again. <sighs> too soon? I mean, what? Hey! My name's Mark II. Your name's Mark II? Yeah. It's not a very good name. <laughs> Maybe your parents didn't like the idea that it was just a Mark, they call you Mark II. <laughs> Were they watching me at the time? No. We know there's going to be a mark, but we're going to make you mark too. <laughs> and it should be mark as well, actually. <laughs> so, Mark. Uh, my question is, now that Peter Capaldi has taken over as the doctor, would you be interested in coming back on Doctor Who? Would I be interested in being one of the on one of the coolest shows okay. in the history of the universe? <laughs> uh, you know, playing with some of the greatest actors that have ever come out of anywhere, Britain and everywhere else. Would I be interested in doing that again? Nah. <laughs> nah. Leave them alone. It's, it's a fantastic thing. The Who, the Who thing was the, way, like, the greatest blessing you could possibly imagine. It was the, the nicest, most amazing group of people. I got a phone call and it was like, uh, you want to be on Doctor Who? I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm trying to work out a dignified way of getting back on the stage, trust me. <laughs> Um, I'm going this way. I might never come back, so hold on. <laughs> Do you think they've gone yet? <laughs> I do, if I just wave them out, I don't have to go out there. <laughs> There's a lot of them. They're asking really silly questions. <laughs> One day, people got up in the line and they said, Mark, we really like you. 
be a wonderful one. But what's it like working with Jared and Jensen? For the 6,000th time. They went, you know what? Nobody ever goes to them and asks them what it's like working with me. <laughs> Next day, YouTube. There's the line. Then, hey, Jared Jensen, we really love you. What's it like working with Mark Shepard? And, and they looked at each other and went, short. <laughs> Class, welcome back. You lost an ear. <laughs> it's good to be the king. <laughs> All right, I'm going to kind of dive away from TV with my question for a bit. You voice the character. <laughs> You voiced the character in a game called The Conduit, yes. named Agent 4. Yes. Why weren't you asked back to do the second game? I don't know. <laughs> well, it sucked. With they that. didn't so. like me. Oh. No, actually they didn't. It was just, you know, it's like all things that happen like this, all the weird stuff, it's always something to do with schedule or somebody working and stuff having to be done. But they were amazing people. Do you know why that was so much fun to do? Because I not only got to work on The Conduit, I also got to work with the people that created it. I got to work on the first decent first-person shooter for the Wii, to go work with Nintendo, to go work with Sega, to go work with High Voltage, who wrote, who wrote the software, and learn what it is to bring a game through full development. Go take it on tour. I was actually at E3, I was demonstrating the game at the Nintendo booth, the Sega booth, and the High Voltage booth. I went and did all the press tour with them, which is like the weirdest thing to do, and it was the most amazing experience, because I love games. So much so they gave me a, a Redbox developers we to play with and they stuff also sorry I had to give it back. But, you can't you know that to own them. This is gonna give you like a hard drive. Here, yeah, play games. <laughs> so it is a perk of what I do that I get to do that stuff. Stuff we used to get in the trouble for. Like I've, I've said this before, there's people here, people here have heard me speak before and most of what I say is on the internet and I, I don't like to repeat myself, but there are some things which are absolutely true. Um, I'm marveling at the fact that 20 years ago, you'd have been beaten up for wearing that. And I'm not kidding. Because that green doesn't... No. Uh, I mean, dead serious for a second. I think it is the most fantastic thing that I can come to Phoenix, the same as if I go to San Diego or I go anywhere else in the world, and go to Eastern Europe, as I was just in Eastern Europe, and go any of these places. And you guys are wearing your heart on your sleeve. You're wearing your fandom on your sleeve. You guys are wearing what you love. What you love. You okay? Can we help you? Is there anything we can do? Okay, just making sure you're okay. You look like you're in a little discomfort. Sorry, I was just trying to be nice. I won't bother next time. Die! <laughs> I would feel so bad. That's the sickest conversation I've had about a year. <laughs> Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, I just think it's fantastic. I think the shit that we used to get beaten up for at school, the stuff that nobody would ever give us a job to do. You, know, you, used, to, you used to have to work in a video store if you, if you cared about watching stuff that wasn't mainstream or whatever. You had to find a way of getting what you got. Now we have the internet. Now we have all these things. Now we are a monetarized asset. Now they're actually pandering to us. It's the most amazing thing. Don't you think? It's cool. It's cool to have different coloured hair. When I was 12 and I had orange hair, it wasn't cool. It was like... What the hell is that? And that's the thing. And I love that. And I love that about these galleries. I told, I told you these things before. Um, I work in a... I work in a medium where we, I, I came from live music and live theatre, and it's my love to have an audience, to interact with another human being, somebody breathing in and out, it's just like the greatest thing to do, right? The interaction, not to do. Depends well, <laughs> who it is, I guess. Um, God, that was an easy shot. Uh, what it is, no, no, seriously, it's, um, 
what's fantastic thing about it is that, is that uh, uh, I travel the world and I get to interact with an audience that I did not get to interact when we were making the television show. We made the television show and there's 150 of our friends there and we do everything we can and we put it all together and we make it the best we can possibly make it. Everybody puts every ounce of, thing, of love that they can put into this to make this work. And we give it to our post-production people and they put all their love and hope and fix it and make it better and then they add music to it and they try to make it the greatest thing. Just so that you'll turn the damn thing on and go <gasps> every now and then. And that's all we're looking for. All we're looking for is that you get as excited about it as we did making it. That's what we're looking for. It's not a cynical thing, it's a love thing. We love it with our whole hearts. Wouldn't do it if we didn't. That's the truth. And then, but we don't have you. When I did, when I did Battlestar, we would have screen parties. It showed who here hasn't seen Battlestar Galactica? Tell people to shut up. We're all fans in here. We don't, we don't rag on other people. You don't spoil anything. They'll take you outside and kill you if you spoil it. <laughs> don't do that. But um, you will. You will see it. You know why you'll see it? Because it's a piece of science fiction that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And there's very few of those, trust me. Most of them get cancelled. So it's a fantastic piece of work. Not just because I'm in it, I do rather well in it. But... <laughs> It is a fantastic, it was a fantastic piece of work before I was in it, and it's a fantastic piece of work 25 years from now. It's a brilliant piece of television, well worth watching. It's like watching the West Wing, it's more interesting than most. So, we do our stuff. We used to have screening parties, and we used to watch it, and you watch it with an audience, and then you would, it was just the most amazing thing to hear oohs and ahs and gasps. You know, I've seen, I've seen Galactica dropped into, into atmosphere on a screen. And the sound was immense. And every single person in the theatre was like, <gasps> it was the most incredible shared experience. Those are the things that it used to be going to the cinema when, you, when, when I was a boy, when I was little, the last Saturday morning cinema, those things. And now we're on TV, and now we're on TV, and you turn it on. Well, you guys don't, you just steal it from the internet. Um, <laughs> too soon again? <laughs> and you buy the DVDs and you do the rest of it. I know, I know. So, but here's the thing, is we're not there with you to share that experience. And the greatest joy that I have is that I get to come here and I get to share that experience to the postpartum. Do you know what I mean? Better or better phrases for me to use, but you know what I'm saying? That it's after we've given it up. And to have that, that love come back to us at this level is the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my life. And I thank you so much for that. Things, a lot of things in life are done with cynicism. A lot of things are created with cynicism. A lot of things are created on the back of other things. If something beautiful is made and then everybody copies it. Right? And we're different. We're a different audience than the audience used to be. We're like the audience in the 40s. You go if you want to. You, we watch it if we want to watch it. We don't watch it because they make us. We've got more than three channels. You know? We choose. We vote with our feet and our money. Right? And we're a powerful lobby. And if you, you know, if you keep fighting for the stuff that you love, they'll make better stuff. That's, that's what I believe. And I think you, you are just as important. I'm part of you, and you are just as important. We are just as important in this land of commerce as, as, as any other decision that's out there. Will they like it? That's what they're afraid of now. Will they like it? It's brilliant. It's a great time to be in TV. What was the question again? <laughs> oh, that one. Sorry guys, I rambled, but it's fun. So I was just wondering... I love how you started a sentence with so. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm totally with you. Go on. Um, You're wondering what? I was wondering when you were cast as Badger on Firefly, uh, did you think you were going to have the experience you had with the casting crew on the show? That's a brilliant question. That is the best phrased question I've ever heard on that subject. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant good question. Brilliant good question. Am I going to answer it? <laughs> okay, fine. No, I didn't. 
No, I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to be that cool. I didn't know those people were going to be that wonderful. I didn't know that Nathan Fillion was going to make me sandwiches and ask me how I was doing. He's a fantastic human being. Those people were so immensely loving. But I've had that the whole way through. It's amazing. The stuff that I really love to do, the stuff that sort of called my name, do this, you're going to love it. You know? Battlestar? Firefly? I mean, Supernatural? Doctor Who? These people are just magical. These are people who love their work, who love to work. And what better, better thing to do in life than have a job that you love doing? Right? I mean, I'm blessed. You're right. I didn't expect it. I had no idea that they were that cool. I went in trying to be all like, you know, see how important I am. And they were just kind and loving and fun and wonderful. You do know that originally Joss wanted to play Badger. So when I met Joss, he had a beard. He was very rough. I was like, something wrong with him? Has he been out drinking too late? Was like, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was just very odd. I couldn't work out why he was giving me, he was really on what I was doing. And then Adam Baldwin, who I've known for years and years and years and years and years and years, a great, great, great man, said, uh, you know, he wrote it for himself. <laughs> I'm like, ah! That's why he's riding me hard like a pony. <laughs> but I think it came out beautifully. The reason why we miss Firefly so much, you want to know the reason why we miss Firefly so much? Because it was stolen from us. It didn't die. It didn't get, you know, there was, there was no reason to take it away. It got taken away, it was a product of its time. If it was out now, oh, can you imagine? What if it came out like three years ago? A totally different climate. If it came out on cable, if it came out on AMC, or if it came out on a, a channel like that, fascinating. So, we can hope, you know? We keep building this stuff, and the geeks have inherited the earth, we're safe. <laughs> Hiya. Hi. Nice hat. Thank you. Um, I was you going to ask me a super who love question? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Um, I was wondering oh. what your favorite parts and least favorite parts about playing Crowley are. Favorite parts? And right here down. <laughs> What's not to love doing? I get to be rude, obnoxious, kill people. I get to say stuff that nobody should be allowed to say to anybody. No one in the history of torture has been tortured with the torture like you'll be tortured with. I mean, I almost peed myself when I heard that. I was like, are you kidding me? I had to work out how to make it make sense without being disgusted at the fact that the sentence ends with a preposition. Because that would bug Crowley. What bugs Crowley is like, no one, you know, he's saying something and he's going to, and he ends with a preposition and it's like, <laughs> no one in history of torture being tortured, like, torture, like, the torture could be tortured with, torture, <laughs> with, torture, torture, with, you know what I mean. <laughs> Which echoes back to Dean in season five in the first, in the first episode I was in, where he goes, when I say, how about you don't miss morons? And he goes, you're the moron. <laughs> it's the fun thing, you know, hearing things for the first time. Sorry, did you have a question? Your favorite and favorite parts about being Crowley? No. That wasn't it. Uh, it was not bad. It was something nice. Something made me feel good, I don't know what it was. I was talking about me, wasn't it? That was it. Oh, yes. My favorite, come on, dialogue's fantastic. Think about all the dialogue. Think about all the delicious things I get to say. I get to blow a pinwheel while I'm torturing somebody. It's insane. It's insane. The, pro the, the wonderful, uh, one of our props department, um, Robin, our on-set props, who also does our off-camera dialogue for us, and she's brilliant at it. I love her dearly. It's like, um, I have this for you. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> and then you can't stop. <laughs> and there's Paul Osring sitting in the chair going,
That's how I show love. Oh, but how do you know she's dead? I love that stuff. I mean, there's so much fun stuff to say. I mean, do you like the stuff that's going on between Dean and Crowley, yes? But you don't like the end of season nine, do you? Ooh, a divided house. I love it. I love it. Who here has not seen the finale? Rule number 712 of science fiction. You don't go down to the pub if you don't want to know what the score is. What was that for? I can't remember. It's one of the other. Favorite parts? That's favorite parts. These favorite parts? Shake. The sore neck. I used to be a tall actor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next! Okay, so... Oh, right. I was... I'm sorry, but that face, you just said okay as an opening line. <laughs> okay. I'm like, yes, okay. So I love I it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. What? What? Yes. Favorite episode of Supernatural to film, and what is your least favorite episode of film, and what is your favorite episode to um, film, and what's your favorite episode to watch, and why? To watch it has to be the French Mistake. It's I've always been pissed that I'm not in it. I've always been pissed that I'm not in it because I should have been in it, but I wasn't. So, and my favorite one to film, I think. Thus far has been the end of season eight. The end of season eight was a magical thing for us. It was just an amazing time. We shot, thanks to the producers, we shot that mostly in sequence. Meaning, I mean, you know you have to shoot, when you do a TV show, you have to shoot economically. So if you're gonna be in that room in scene one and scene 27, you have to shoot that all in one day. You know, you can't just go there and then come back and go and come back, it costs too much money. So you have to plan out what you're doing. And what they did was they planned out three days in that church, which was built on set. The exterior was built in the middle of nowhere. The interior was built on stage. So the interior is wet leaves and dirt and it just has that feel to it. It's actually indoors. It's like somebody went into your living room and put leaves in it and soaks them down every hour. It's like the most amazing place. And we lived in there for three days. So we did all the Abaddon scenes, all the stuff, all the, all the, the girls part, all the me singing changes. All, this, all the weird stuff, we did it in order, which made it beautiful, so the build worked. And I have to tell you, that crew is the greatest crew I've ever worked with for one reason. They supported us through every moment of what we did. They made it easy and effortless for us to hit those highs that we were trying to hit. The other actors, Jensen was off camera, meaning he's not actually being filmed. Off camera with me for six hours doing his stuff and he never let the intensity up. And it became, one of my favorite things I've ever done. I think it was a really, really cool, all of us. There wasn't anybody in that, that, that last section that wasn't amazing. And it was just, we felt like we were walking in the same direction and it was such a, an honor to do that. Thank you. Why don't I ask one or two questions? I never answer questions. What's wrong with me? Must be the heat. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. Oh. No. Is there any... Is there Come any? That's you and me. <laughs> Sad, isn't it? You're self here? Yeah, stop. Go <laughs> on. So? Is there any way you can try and get Osric back? And? Why would I want to? He's annoying. <laughs> and? Have you been watching Kate Mulgrew on Orange is the New Black? She's actually really good at Orange is the New Black. She's yeah, really she's really good. It's a great show. It's a really good show. I don't have as much time to watch it, so I play catch up way late. And I, every time I catch up, it feels really good. It's Just like up today? Um, very good season. Yes. 
It's yeah, it was because all the promos are out, all the discs are out for, for any consideration. It's kind of cool. It's really cool. Um, want to bring Osric back? Why? <laughs> you like Kevin? Yeah. yeah. Love me. Doesn't Love sound me. like you're particularly <laughs> sure. Oh, crap. You like Kevin? Yeah. Crowley and Kevin. Crowley and Kevin sitting in a tree. Being tortured. Nah. He doesn't kiss as well as Bobby. <laughs> or Jim. That's the same as Bobby is Jim. I'm really sure it's a shot. Well, yeah, but, but Jim is working with me. But listen, if I knew that Osric was or wasn't coming back, would I tell you? No. Next question. Go on. Faster. You can stand up if you want to. Directing and producing and everything. How would you have that end? Interesting. The way it should be, with Crowley in a bath, <laughs> listening to Norwegian death. <laughs> Who care about the, the, the fluffy angel dude and whatever his name? Oh look, there's one here. It's like set up, see? This whole thing does nothing for me. <laughs> Baby in a trench coat? I mean, really? <laughs> Hi. Hey. How you doing? Alright. Having fun? Yeah. Love the glasses. Thank you. Um, oh gosh, I swear. <laughs> <sighs> Alright. So what's it like working? No. <laughs> also the smartest fandom in the world. Never played a villain. <laughs> Don't give me that. I've never played a villain. Did we have a date? <laughs> Don't give me that. <laughs> oh, crap. I've got shit that's down my back. I don't know. So I won't give again. This is powerful. You are. Um, you are a woman. You should know that by now. Never been a villain. <laughs> this is turning into every day I've ever been on. This is good for you. So, uh, so. Yes. Buttons in here and there. So, nothing. That's nothing. It's all right. You didn't mean it. It's all my fault. So you Don't hit me. You know, I, I resist the tentage. Oh. I'm not, I'm sorry! <laughs> you don't think you have any power. Today, in booth one, I will be doing any of the photo ops that anybody has missed. Please show up. Saturday, 5.30, I'll do a second one too, a photo booth, booth two. So if you haven't hit your photo ops, come find me and do that. So I found some people who were miserable and didn't get a photo op. So I said, can you open it up again? And if you want, come find me. I got a 6 p.m. in booth one, and tomorrow I'll have a 5.30 in booth two, okay? Are you still here? <laughs> Like 
every date I've ever had. <laughs> I just won't leave. <sighs> I've never played villains. I have played people with diametrically opposed morals, moral values, <laughs> different perceptions of ideas. I usually play the one of the two things that I love to play. You know the two things I love to play on? Okay. Oh, sarcasm. We really have dated. <laughs> two things that I believe are worth playing is I either want to play the man who sells out, sells out the mission before they've even left the planet. Right? <laughs> Dr. Zachary Smith in Lost in Space. The guy that screws them before they started. Uh, William H. Macy in Fargo. He screwed before he started. And you just know it's never going to get better and it's always going to be there. Dr. Gaius Baltar. From the beginning, great roles, brilliant roles to play, right? Guys that, the guys that screwed up on day one and they're going to try to spend the rest of their life trying to fix it. Great characters, right? Or, the last sane man in the universe. Romo Lankin. Um, Crowley. Badger. Think about it. They're all Eddie Albert in Green Acres. <laughs> Everybody around him is insane, and he's going... I just paid attention to what I'm saying, everything would be fine! And that's the essence of it. Those are the characters that are worth playing, but they're not evil. Evil is in the, behind, in the eye of the beholder, right? Evil has always been in the eye of the beholder. Do you have a crown as the king of hell? What? Do you have a crown for the king of hell? No. Oh. Do you want one? No. I don't like hands. I don't like hands. It's really fun. I haven't smoked in ten years. I need a cigarette now. Am I, am I tall enough to reach this? I don't know. Ask yourself that question in five years. First and foremost, I want to thank you on behalf of my friend Peter and my friend F who are not able to be here because you are one of our very, very favorite actors. And I want to thank you for being a very complex tall, person on the stage. Well, I would tell tall. you. You're not necessarily tall. I'm really sure. <laughs> Supernatural. Oh, oh. I just want to know if all of the characters you've ever played had to fight to the death. <laughs> Who do you think would win? Never, ever, ever cross the fan streams. <laughs> Why not? Shipping, I get. Shipping makes sense. We all want to do something with our time. <laughs> but you don't cross the fan streams. How hard was it to design the universe before you come in and you start screwing with it by putting other universes in it? There have been video games. It's like a games. bad Star Trek episode. There have been video games that have successfully crossed universes. They Kingdom never Hearts have. They never in Final Fantasy and it was a great game. Define the word great. Great? Great? Good? Yeah. Great? Ooh. There are some great. There's some great out there. But there's a lot of good. There's a lot of mediocre. There's not a lot of great. There's great. Battlestar is great. Not because I'm in it, because it's great. It was great before I got there. Right? Star Trek was great before Star Trek was great before, before I ever watched it. But there are so many things that are great. You know? We don't mess with that. It's like going, you are such a wonderful gymnast. We've decided you need to do this underwater. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> they did that already, didn't they? You know, cross the fan streams. Then dare I mess with greatness and ask if I can have a hug? Of course. Aww. If you can reach. <laughs> Hiya. Hello. You have four seconds. Oh, okay. Well, first I want to say to everyone that he actually reads his tweets. He proved it this morning to me. But, so. I used to actually have to approve every person that followed me. Uh, I did it 60,000 times before I went, this is insane. <laughs> and then I got verified on a public account. And I read as many of my tweets as I can. I just read. I don't, yeah, I'll see it. I'll see it in a while. No, I don't. I only say no when it's funny. 
I only say no when it's funny. Which one did I tweet you back? That's right. It's fantastic. See? Yeah. I do. I do respond. But you've got to be funny and witty and interesting. If you're going to say, eh, ma, and then you go, you know what? There's a whole plethora of people writing stuff about like, homophobic crap on the, on, the, on the tweets. I'm like, what is wrong with you people? And it's like, I don't know what it is. It's people trying to get a rise out of people so they'll get a response. And I'm like, we don't do that. We don't do that, do we? Does anyone in this room do that? I don't think so. Right, I don't do that. Why the hell would you want to do that to me? Why would you write, Mark, I love you, please retweet back 642 <laughs> times in a line. It's ridiculous. Write it once, I'll see it. I love it. I love all you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for giving your tweets. And um, I've got a two part question. First part, can you say hello, boys? Hello, boys. <laughs> It changes, isn't it? It's like, hello, boys. Hello, boys. Hello, boys. <laughs> Kevin. Hello, sir. <laughs> Kevin. Okay, and the last, the second part is... That wasn't very demanding. It's okay. <laughs> um, you seem to do, I mean, obviously, you've done so much sci-fi. Is there something about sci-fi, and not only you, but other actors, they Love? seem to... Yes. Yes. Of course. Is it... You know what it is? Imagination. Why do you love it? Why do we all love it? Why do we love sci-fi? The use of imagination. How many damn police procedurals can you watch unless they're in space? <laughs> how many medical dramas can you watch? And, well, House actually is a kind of exception to the rule, but, but even then, that's a really hard way to make a TV show. One in three, I'd say one in three episodes of House were brilliant. But you, you still have to make a procedural. It's hard to do in a normal sense. We, as lovers of sci-fi, and makers of sci-fi, and creators of sci-fi, as we all are, right? Ron Moore, Josh Sweden, David Icke, all the people I've ever worked, Michael Angie, all the people I know, all these amazing people, Harvey Grease and Mark's Watch, everybody I've ever worked with, we're all the same. We're all just fans and geeks that got a decent job. <laughs> and just to get them to pay us to do something we were doing for free. We were doodling on our books and creating comics and whatever, and now they pay us to do it? It's amazing, but the thing is, it's about the imagination. The stories about imagination and endeavors of the heart, and th they're, they're bigger and more romantic and more interesting than I woke up in the morning and went over there and shot somebody. <laughs> we want to know, but in which dimension? <laughs> and why? You know? Look at, look, remember the X-Files, right? I mean, it, was, it was a wonderful thing to be right? One of my favorite episodes ever is Monday. Right, the one is, I was talking to Mitch, Mitch Pelagi the, the other day, and he was like, I was like, that is a brilliant episode. Where Darren Burroughs gets up every day and relives, relives the same event, where he straps a bomb to himself and goes to the bank. But it's such a, but it's, yeah, of course, but we've always had Kim directed that episode. That's why Kim Manners, the great Kim Manners directed that episode. But that's the stuff that you go, but what if? But when? But how? Why does it do that? And that's what we have to do. We have to do that with what we love. We have to promote what we love. We have to fight for what we love. You have to tell them what you like. You have to show them and vote with your money, with you know, all the things that you do, little Kickstarter things here and there, supporting stuff, downloading stuff, making sure that the stuff that you love is made popular. Otherwise, they're gonna serve to you what they wanna serve to you, right? We have a duty to do that, you know? For us, by us, really, you know? You trying to tell me I'm done? Three minutes? I got one more, oh, sorry to let you guys down. I could do this all day, but thank you. Ah, oh, now, what better way to end the day? Hope they leave now. Oh, I owe you guys, okay? I will hug you all eventually, but I owe you, okay? Thank you. Fantastic. Hi, and I love you. Thank you. Um, I am going to cross the fandom streams, but I'm the princess of magic, so I get to break the rules if I want. <laughs> I would very much like to know, on the one hand, you have Crowley, who is essentially the ultimate deal maker, and on the other hand, you have Jim Sterling, 
who, by the laws of the universe, never loses. So, I just would love to know what would happen if Crowley tried to make a deal with Sterling, if it would be an unstoppable force meets another object situation. Well, we, we kind of did that with, with uh, Christian Kane's character, didn't we? He's a man who never, Elliot's a man who never loses a fight, and Sterling's a man who never loses. So the question was whether, um, excuse me, the question was when my then, whatever, 11 year old son turned around to them and go, why don't you have my dad fight Christian? I was like, oh, thank you. It was how to do that. So the same imagination, John Rogers, Amy Berg, all writers that we love in our universe, for Eureka, for everything from Transformers to whatever, that's their, when that question was posed to them, that's what they did with the question. So it does come from, stem, stem from the same answer. But I'm gonna give you the best answer that I can end this conversation sadly with, which is this is, if that's what you want to see, write it. I'll probably show up and act it. Eventually, I'll be in everything, right?